Hi, I'm Sulagna Bhattacharya, co-founder and CEO of Nanoscope Therapeutics. Nanoscope, we are working on gene therapies for various retinal degenerative diseases for millions of blind patients. Um, currently, our phase 2B multicenter sham controlled randomized trial is going on. We just released the uh, top line data. Dr. Bauer will be presenting our um, data first time in ARVO scientific presentation. Our uh, phase 2 open level Stargard trial is also going on. We released the six month data from that trial and uh, uh, we released a patient video too. Um, we will be releasing more patient videos uh, in near future from Stargard Open Label Trial. Our RP trial is a, a mask uh, randomized trial, so we will not be able to release the patient video right away. But uh, follow us on LinkedIn or um, you know Twitter, and you will see when we release uh, those. Everyone, myself Samar Mohanty, I am co-founder and president of Nanoscope Therapeutics. Uh, as Sulagna mentioned, uh, we are working on mutation agnostic gene therapy for democratizing genetic medicine to patients irrespective of their gene mutation and most importantly addressing the population with high unmet need, their severely degenerated uh, retinal diseases impacting the working age as well as adult population. So our therapies are intended for restoring vision in those patients. Tell me more about the Stargardt trial that you are currently doing. Yeah, our therapy is a gene agnostic gene therapy, so uh, it doesn't matter whatever genetic mutation you have uh, behind your Stargardt macular degeneration. We have patients from ABCA4 and other genetic mutation too. Um, we are running multi-center trial, it's an open level phase 2 trial currently going on. Um, and um, we are seeing um, very favorable safety as well as efficacy. Um, the, the data is coming out and you will see, you will release some of the patient videos. So a lot to come and we are expecting to start our regulatory interaction with uh, on the totality of the data. We have seen um, like, you know, very encouraging result that and especially with this patient they are at the very end stage of Stargardt where they have almost lost their vision and such an unmet need and absolutely no hope currently available for this patient. We are very very hopeful we will be working with all regulatory agencies and uh, get their guidance about the totality of how to take it to the market in the most effective accelerated path. Can you tell me in more detail about the treatments that you're doing? Yeah, we are targeting uh, the viable cells which remain viable, which are higher order neurons like bipolar cells. They are close to the photoreceptors. So the bipolar cells, we are actually injecting a gene uh, which is delivered through AV vector and the cell produces the protein which is goes to the membrane and make those bipolar cells light sensitive. So it's a single injection, intravitreal injection. Um, in your eye and it's an intervitreal injection that is very common in um, any retina practice. You don't even need to use any surgical um, room for this. Um, it, it's done in millions for a weight MD patient currently which is proven uh, much safer compared to other um, injection procedure and we believe it's going to stay for long. Um, hopeful about probably a lifetime. Is this another VEGF drug? The multi-characteristic opsin is a transgene, transgene for light sensitive protein that we have engineered. It's packaged into a AV2 vector and with intravitreal injection, as Sulagna mentioned, it transduces the bipolar cells, specifically on bipolar cells, and the bipolar cells produce this protein and the multi-characteristic opsin protein goes to the membrane and act as a light trans as an uh, artificial photoreceptors. So when light falls on these uh, bipolar cells, they convert light to electrical energy or signal which transmitted through ganglion cell to the brain, allowing an alternative pathway for vision restoration in patients who have lost their photoreceptors or RPE 
any alto retinol. So shining a light stimulates the drug? So our opsin is a ambient light activable opsin. So the patients once uh, in their retina the MCO is expressed, they can actually the cells can be stimulated with ambient light. There is no stimulation uh, external device that is required to stimulate these cells. Have there been any negative side effects from using this therapy? As, as you say, every uh, intravitreal AV injection is associated with some level of inflammation, but the, the patients have been treated with uh, corticosteroids, topical, and uh, in, I think, very rare cases with oral steroid to control. So the safety profile is favorable as compared to other AV programs. We have not seen any serious or severe adverse event, ocular or non-ocular. So that's, uh, we are very excited about the safety profile of this drug. How large is your trial and what percentage of people are seeing benefit from this therapy? So I will say that we have uh, so far in our clinical program 44 patients, 11 subjects uh, uh, in phase 1 to 8 trials were treated with both low and high dose. We see out of those 11 patients, 9 out of 11 improved by two light level in their mobility assay or 0.3 log mark which is three lines uh, in visual equity measured by fiber visual equity. So we have very consistent data in the next uh, phase 2B randomized control trial for which Dr. David Bauer will be presenting this ARVO in this afternoon uh, that you will see that 18 subjects out of 27 were dosed with MCO and 9 were SAM control subject. Uh, those 18 subjects, all of them improved in one of the three key assessments, which is two light level improvement in their mobility or navigational vision or two light level improvement in identifying shapes, uh, uh, different shapes like sphere, like cube or a pyramid like the different shapes and or, or in visual equity with 0.3 log mark. So there's very encouraging data there. So any of the composite endpoints yielding statistical significance as compared to the same group. Uh, those data I, I think will be uh, shared today by Dr. Mm -hmm. Boer. Mm -hmm. And then in the star, starlight study, which is uh, uh, a six percent study, all were dosed with a high dose of MCO, 1.2 e to the by 11, a single eye treatment in their worst seeing eye. Uh, I think we, in the out of those six patients, three patients are macular degeneration type and three has pan retinal dystrophy. So we are seeing later gains in all three out of three uh, macular degeneration patients with some improving uh, more than 20 letters, some improving more than 10 letters and some just over, you know, have positive letter gains. So, so that's very encouraging to us and with our next program where uh, you know AV vector when intravitreal injecting is expressing everywhere but we have a program for advanced AMD where we are planning to use la very low power laser to target the macula and express this opsin only in the macula region so that we can uh, have a possibility of redosing the patients, increasing the transfection efficiency, increasing the uh, visual gains that we are seeing in an AV program while minimizing any inflammation that may occur to the large uh, AMD population. What are your next steps in the Stargard study? It's too early to say we'll, wait, we'll have quite a bit regulatory interaction in coming few months. Once we talk to the regulator, we'll know exactly like uh, how the totality of the data we can approach for the approval. So as, as Sulagna mentioning, uh, MCO, our mutation agnostic gene therapy, lot of patients in the RP study have ABCA4 mutation and ABCA4 mutation is also implicated for Stargard macular degeneration. So since we are gene agnostic and we are trying to, we are to our goal is to first treat the most advanced retinal degenerative diseases, uh, so there is a lot of overlap between RP and Stargard. That's why we have to talk to the agency to see how, what is the path for the next, you know, development path where, 
whether this treatment will be available for all outer retinal degenerative diseases including the IRDs like RP or Stargard or, and so those we have to discuss with regulatory agency and see according to design uh, the development path for Stargard disease. Let's talk about your laser delivery method. Has this caused any scar tissue or further damage to the eye? So, in our case, the, we are using a near infrared low power laser which is OCT guided. That means a, a subject will come with her chin rest and the examiner will examine the whole fundus with a OCT image and mark the area where there is uh, no outer retina or there is a loss of photoreceptors. That means they are the those are the region our laser will illuminate to deliver the gene or perforate those cells. So just to tell there is no, those areas have already lost the ability to have vision in those areas. So the laser, uh, the safety issue is very minimal and we have, we are doing, continue to do the talk studies or safety studies of use of this laser and we have not seen any scar or other kind of damage to the area where the laser is shining. And of course, for the human study, we are conducting a GLP study on non-human primate before we go to fast in human. Mm -hmm. But the most important part is just to remember, it's a near infrared, low power laser falling on the area of retina, which has already lost photoreceptors. So the main cause of damage with the laser to the photoreceptor is because presence of photoreceptor, they're very sensitive to light. So because of heat and high power of visible laser, cause those damages and as you can imagine lasers are being used a lot in retina whether it's for photocoagulation of blood vessels so and and all of the procedures so lasers therapeutic effect is very well known so our power levels that we are using is actually order of magnitude lower than other therapeutic lasers which are used in retina so it's much more low power than the lasers being used in current practice for uh, retina treatments so just to clarify, the laser treatment is used in the geographic atrophy study. In the Stargardt study, the injection is stimulated by ambient light. So the RP in the Stargardt study, so uh, the molecule is basically delivered by AV virus. So it's a viral vector, that's why it's been uh, spreaded across the retina. But for geographic atrophy, the laser is actually going to draw wherever you lost your photoreceptor and it's going to deliver there. So it will be targeted delivery. The laser targeted therapy is only for people in the later stage of macular degeneration with geographic atrophy then. 90, more than 90% percent patients are affected by dry MD and 5% uh, are wet MD but towards the end stage of the disease AMD, no matter what, whether wet or dry form, there is a loss of photoreceptors. Mm -hmm. So our therapy is primarily for those patients uh, who have lost photoreceptor, there is no treatment for them and most of the treatment under development or approved is to slow down the progression of the disease and how to slow down that photoreceptor loss while we are addressing the patient who have already lost the photoreceptor or are on the path of losing their mm -hmm. vision due to the photoreceptor loss. Are you actively enrolling in trials now? How can someone contact you if they're interested in the therapy or would like to get involved in a trial? So at this moment, we are not actively recruiting any patient. We're only recruiting patient for an observation study. But uh, once we know our regulatory path very clearly, we'll definitely um, keep the patient updated. And the best way to get hold of us is through clinicaltrial.gov. Whenever our, we'll start recruiting, you'll see the um, information will be changed like you know recruiting again and then uh, all the site information are there so definitely uh, yes so I, I will add to that what Sulagna mentioned 
you can follow us on LinkedIn or Twitter or yeah. visit our website. So uh, we will uh, s we share the news upcoming if there is a IND approval happen before even we mm -hmm. post in clinicaltrial.gov, it will be available on our website and we will be posting videos of patients mm -hmm. who are improving and yeah. who are ready to talk about the disease and how that has our therapy has benefited them in case of Stargard macular degeneration mm -hmm. or other retinal degenerative disease. So uh, I think that will be the best way to mm -hmm. you know to uh, what are the in the horizon which yeah. uh, try absolutely we would love you to follow us so you get to know whenever any any status change anything happens you know you'll be informed